I started watching the hearings, wanting to root for the takedown of Clarence Thomas. Um, I watched the television set, and the television set told me that this was a bad man, and the newspapers told me that he was a bad man. They, and uh, I remember Eleanor Smeal, I remember Patricia Schroeder walking up the steps, these ladies, and saying, this guy, we're going to take a stand against this guy for, for sexual harassment, serial sexual harassment. So I watched these hearings like a spectator who wanted to see somebody mauled, you know, like a, a lions mauling, you know, Romans. And I watched day one, I watched day two, I watched the entire thing. I went from wanting him to be taken down to wondering where's the beef, you know, what's going on here? I don't understand what I'm watching here. I don't understand the color commentary that's on the screen where they're saying, oh, this is outrageous. And I didn't understand the bumper stickers that were going by me on the street saying, I believe Anita. I said, I believe Anita what? What's going on here? I don't understand what's going on here. Everything that I knew, everything that I picked up at college in my American studies, cultural Marxist, oppressor oppressed, uh, black people are, all, are always right, white people are always wrong. I didn't understand how Ted Kennedy the Ted Kennedy of Chappaquiddick fame, how Howard Metzenbaum, Joe Biden, a series of white privileged men could sit in judgment of this man who was the, the son of grandparents who were sharecroppers who raised him and he went to Yale Law School. He did everything right, including allowing for Anita Hill to rise through the ranks of the legal profession, through, through jobs with him, where she never had a sexual relationship with him at all, he did nothing untoward, and she was party to this takedown, and I did not understand how it could be that these white people of privilege were attacking this black man who was in this historic position while the, while, while the mainstream media set, uh, took him down. I remember sitting in the classes thinking, what is she talking about? What is this professor talking about? It doesn't make sense to me. It didn't ring true in my bones, so when I got a survey in the mail asking me to grade my American Studies degree. I started to read those books and I started to look up the names of those people and I started to find out that they were part of this group called the Frankfurt School. It sounds weird <laughs> to, to talk about the Frankfurt School. Most people have never heard of the Frankfurt School, but the Frankfurt School, I believe, are the origins of the mess we find ourselves in our culture right now. They are the ultimately the architects of political correctness. They're the architects of multiculturalism. They're the architects of the destruction of American culture as we know it. The ones that said e pluribus unum is wrong. One from many is wrong. They were the ones that separated people by race and pitted people based upon, instead of the old economic Marxist argument of the haves versus the have-nots and the class struggle based upon uh, the peasants fighting off the, you know, the, the, the owner but class. But you just explained it even deeper, which I, I just drew my attention, in the fact that you already had a segment of people in this country, American blacks, who felt disenfranchised, who felt no love or particular loyalty to the country at the time because they were treated like, like slaves and chattel, and how they were able to come and raise them up, use their angst against this country, to become sort of, sort of an ally, and even women from the well, women's suffrage well, that's, to help their yes, movement. Well, that, well, that's that's what they did. They, I, I was about to tell you that they okay. that they tran that they translated economic Marxism Marxism to cultural Marxism to pit that to take advantage of black people who have had been dispossessed, had been treated miserably, and to pit them against the white uh, the, the white establishment. They did so also with the, the female establishment. They, they started to pit male versus female. They started to pit uh, black versus white. This multiculturalist model turned in ac academia into the post-structuralism that you see. When your kid now goes to school, they have the opportunity of graduating with a queer studies degree. It's the, it's the building up of the victimology, an entire canon, an entire worldview for gays to believe that their entire uh, path in life is to fight the establishment because the establishment is out to keep you down. They do it with blacks. They do it with Hispanics. And I'm telling you, 
it runs so contrary to what's in the core of what I am as a human being. And that's why I think that the Clarence Thomas hearings were so instrumental to me because my entire sense of righteousness, my righteous indignance as a, uh, as a youth going through my conversion to conservatism was based upon the inequities that I found in society. And when I discovered that the cultural left was not interested in creating equality in this country that it wanted to use that it wanted to pit blacks against whites in order to continue to climb to get uh, political power in this country it was demoralizing to say the least but once I figured it out I decided to help it with it that drive on Wilshire Boulevard that I had where I said I want a mission in life this is my goal in life I want to destroy the institutional left. I want to make it so that black people in this country, Hispanics in this country, gays in this country have the freedom to believe in whatever political philosophy they want to believe in. That the Democratic Party is not the, is not the only place for them in this country. I believe in freedom. I believe in individuality to the core of my belief. And my fights out there are an, an attack on the NAACP my attacks on the mainstream media are because I want to break down this artificial construct that pits Americans against each other.